Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Great Man Ayi Lara and especially I am welcoming you to this episode as we open the week and we begin to expose each other to information that the religious leaders have kept uh, secret from us. The information that should be made available for every single person living on earth which has been kept as a secret or some kind of um, sacred right that only those who are called pastors, imams, sheikh, abalist have access to. And I'm teaching this because of several researches I have done on it. And coincidentally, someone was asking me just this weekend that how is it that when people do incantation against the other person or they do voodoo or charm against another person that it kind of work on them and all that that what is actually the principles of that and as a seeker i feel a need to actually now come out to talk about these things at the end of this particular teaching and explanation you will know if you yourself are diabolical if you can be diabolical if you are being diabolical and uh, if you still want to be diabolical now when you go to google or any dictionary to search the meaning of the word diabolical it is actually stated or defined as devil's characteristics devil's characteristics the characteristics of saying okay someone is a devil or a satan or the traits you will see in a person and you can easily just call them devil, demon, demonic, satan, evil agent and all of those things. But then that is wrong. When you don't know the purpose of a thing, abuse of such a thing becomes inevitable. All of these are science. There have been people who have lived or graced this particular planet who in their own mortal state did so many miraculous stuff and it looks so spectacular to us rather it looks so spectacular to us we get to a point where we begin to now want to worship them because of uh, the time they invested in bringing out what i call some level of divine reality now when such people die it is very easy for mankind to turn them into a kind of demigod or semi-god or an intermediary between them and God. We have an uh, example of uh, Shango, Oya, Obatala, Yeshua of the Jewish people. We have the people like uh, Joseph, Ayobapa, Lola and the rest of them. And there are some still living with us right now. We have Thor, we have uh, Atis, we have uh, Horus, we have uh, we have Krishna and several other of them who at a point in time were able to extract divine principles and make use of it in this mortal state or mortal plane and because of that we kind of turn them into a god. Now my purpose on earth is not so huge and so magnanimous. It is to set you free from the fear of both hell and heaven and also to hand over to you the key for you to be your own God. I detest when someone had to be your contact person to yourself. When you want to get things done for you or inside of you, but if you don't reach out to another person, you can't get it done. It upset me as a person. So what did I do? I invested myself into discovering and researching most of these things. And it is not a very awesome thing, or let me say, not an easy stuff, not an easy tax. Because those who are making money off you, because of the information hidden from you, are not happy with someone like me who is handing over the key to your hell and to your heaven into your hands. Today I will talk to you about the science of diabolism, the science of diabolism. If you're watching me on YouTube, please press the subscribe button and also the notification button. If you're watching me on Facebook, don't be greedy. Press the, uh, the share button and let other people also join us. Now, 
the reason why I said it is a science, that diabolism is a science, is because without a knowledge or technical know-how, you cannot keep repeating the same event over and over again and getting the result that you desire. What is science? Science simply means knowledge. Knowledge is what they call science. So when somebody asks you and say, are you a scientist? They are telling you, are you knowledgeable? You should be proud to say, yes, I'm a scientist. Now, being a scientist is one of the characteristics of showing that you are also a spiritual person. Now, what do the scientists do? They bring the unseen into the seen realm. They try to extract information that you can readily not see with your own eyes or be able to apply. And they make it so explanatory and they give it to you and tell you, okay, I'm no more God over your life. You can repeat this thing. Either you are in Yugoslavia, in America, in North Korea. It will give you the same exact answer that you are looking for. So that's what it means to be a scientist. Now, the science of diabolism. Remember, I explained to you what diabolism means or what di being diabolical means. According to the dictionary, it states that being diabolical means having a trait or characteristics of a devil which is really wrong. Now, diabolism is you igniting some laws of nature that governs the spiritual state of man into having their existence or reality in this world. And anyone can be diabolical. You can give it a different brand, brand name you can call it miracle, you can call it divine intervention, you can call it whatever it is, but anybody can be diabolical. You can be diabolical as you are looking at me right now. Now, diabolism is not a negative thing. It is not negative. But when diabolical means is used to approach you, relate with you, you will see it as a negative thing. Just because you do not possess enough power to be able to communicate in that frequency of diabolism back to the person who is actually relating with you diabolically. The only reason why you see diabolism as something that is negative is because you do not possess the power that the other person possesses. It's like having law and having power with you. If I have the power to dictate what happens in my home or my state and no one can query me. Every other person sees me as a bad person. But if they also have the power to outturn or query my power, they see power as a good thing. So the only reason why you see diabolism as a bad thing is because you don't know the way to diabolical means also. Now, being diabolical has nothing to do with maybe lighting up candles and all of those things. As a matter of fact, it has nothing to do with it. You see, when you carry calabash, you carry palm oil, you kill goat, you kill ram, you put on candle, you do this, you hang something over you, you look dirty and tattered and battered, and telling you, you are just going extra. It's like a case of a beggar who has one dog and a cat. And the dog is actually assuming the pose of the beggar, trying to help the owner gets some money. You know, people love dogs. And then the cat also wanted to help the beggar, decided to faint. And instead of just facing downward, he faced upward and like this. So we said, you are overreacting. So there's a means of you being overreacting when it comes to practice of diabolical means. Now you must understand that to be diabolical, if it is existing in this planet where you find yourself, it is also created or a power given by the spirit of life. I greet everyone just joining us. If you start late, you can begin it from the beginning. If there's something called diabolism, then there is something who gave it approval to exist either in the physical realm or in the spiritual realm. Now, the Christians will say something like, um, All power belongs to Jesus. All power belongs to Him. All power belongs to Jesus. All power belong to him. Now you be, you believe that Jesus is your God. Now you now believe that all power belong to that Jesus. Automatically, either the power is good or the power is bad. You still give credit to Jesus. So if the power is actually working against you part time, 
it doesn't mean the power is not coming from the same source but it is the negative part of the power that is working so you can easily just tap into the source of the power to neutralize the negative aspect of the power with the positive aspect do we have that allegory and the illustration right right that does not mean we say that jesus is god now the muslim people will say he did not serat ali mustaqim he did not serat ali mustaqim which means that god only allah can show you the way in another way you can say that all power belongs to allah or they say allah Akbar, which means allah is the greatest so if allah is the greatest that shows that every other thing bows to allah now as a seeker which i am i don't believe in allah of the Quran or god of the bible i believe in the spirit of life you call him god they call him allah i call him the spirit of life because i don't want to put gender either masculine gender feminine gender or try to limit him to a book or limit the spirit of life to a book so i call it the spirit of life now if the spirit of life is the reason why everything have their being have their living can move can breathe can be useful then the spirit of life is also responsible for every form of power existing and in irrespective of the angle you are using the power it still belong to the spirit of life because the spirit of life is what gives it life to be useful or to be active now there are things you do not know about those who are diabolical which if you know you will never see diabolical or diabolism as a negative things anymore now a diabolical person first agree with the fact now i want you to know this agree with the fact or is aware that there is a presence of spiritual power in the universe a diabolical person is aware of the presence of spiritual power in the universe now this person might not believe in your kind of god this person might not be coming to your church or your mosque this person might not even be a seeker this person could be a traditionalist we often zone diabolism to people who are spiritual or who are that traditionalist now but this person is aware of something you are denying this person is aware of the presence of spiritual power in existence now if you have access to that spiritual power or not does not negate the fact that there are spiritual powers and uh, unfortunately most of you who say you go to church you go to mosque and all of those things do not have the slightest hint of the kind of power you could assess or you could harness in life now this is the reason why i said being a muslim being a christian being a buddhist being an hindu being a traditionalist will not launch you into the deeper realm of your divine reality because you can only attain the level of spiritual power that is contained in the scripture that you read the thing you call bible cannot explicitly show you how mighty and how powerful the spirit of life is and whatever it is you know about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a limited version of what muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the side or the angle of the spirit of life you do not seek for yourself you will never discover now these people you call diabolical folks they are aware of the supernatural power in existence another thing is that they have confidence in themselves they have confidence in themselves that they are capable of harnessing these powers they have confidence in themselves that they are capable of harnessing this power any kind at all that they can imagine either the power to do good or the power to do evil the degree of the evil and the degree of the goodness is now limited to them also to dictate that is why when i tell you as a seeker i tell you that come you are your own god and you are your own devil because the degree of your imagination and the possibility you have imag imagined for yourself is only the limitation you can attain in life if you think you are limitless i'm telling you the truth you are absolutely limitless in life but how much of this limitation are you taking away by putting a tag on yourself and say okay it is only the things i read in the bible or korean that i will follow to the end of my life you are actually abusing your unlimited nature so someone who you call diabolical is actually aware of they have confidence in themselves 
Now, their confidence now is not in something else outside of them. First, they grow up the confidence in themselves that if there are spiritual power, note that they have actually come to terms with the fact that there are spiritual power in existence. Now, they have confidence in themselves that they themselves, not their pastor, not their sheikh, not some selected folks, they have the power to also harness these spiritual powers to the degree that they can imagine. To the degree that they can imagine in that regard you are limitless there is no limitation to what you can do as long as you believe that you can do it now this is not motivational talk the third thing about those who are diabolical is that they believe in something they call aura 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 and uh, transferable energy now aura to so many limited folks let's say the religious folks they see aura as only something that will make people just like you or dislike you. So they said, I have a good aura, I have a bad aura. They limit it to the point of association. No, aura is an unseen energy. It is formidable, it is substantial, but it is unseen. Now, a diabolical person is aware of the fact that an aura or Unseen forces are transferable energy. Now, if the supernatural or spiritual power exists in the universe, a diabolical person could use the means of meditation to get that power from the universe into him or herself. And this person also understands that if I can absorb or soak in this spiritual power i can also transfer this spiritual power into any object whatsoever into any object whatsoever so they can transfer this energy into a tree into a plastic into an animal they can transfer it into a brick into anything at all they have that science and know how they know and understand how to soak in power and also transfer power. Do you know that? Do they teach you that in your church? Are you taught that in your mosque? That is a limitation of what religion is doing to you. They understand that an aura or transferable energy is available in the atmosphere. They have the technical know-how of how to absorb it into themselves. So a person who have absorbed so much of healing aura in himself when he walks on the street and you touch his body or you touch his garment or you touch whatever what happens is that you get the healing why because he has made him or him herself a reservoir of that spiritual power that he first reckoned that is in existence do you get the point now now your jesus was said to have healed someone who touched the hem of his garment because there is something he understood that you are yet to get to that spot of understanding that you can absorb or soak in power from the universe through the means of meditation now for once forget the fact that this jesus that was taught you was a plagiarized uh, one of the gods of egypt by the roman people but you will see what they also pointed to you in that same scripture several times they will say that he left his disciple to a secluded place to do what to pray now this prayer in hebrew word means to meditate to meditate means to make his himself or his temple or his vessel available for possession for possession now during the course of meditation if you are a seeker you can learn this during the course of meditation your body which is your mortal mortal casing is susceptible for infiltration by so many powers and so many things going on in the spiritual frequency it is not left to you to use the power of your mind to narrow yourself down to the kind of power you want to soak in, the kind of solar energy, the kind of healing energy you want to soak in. And if you can use the same meditation to soak in some evil powers also. Remember now that either God or devil is not responsible for both the good power and the bad power. All of these things are available in the universe. It beat onto you as you think in your heart. If your mindset is streamlined and narrowed towards soaking in good power, you will get good power. When you are seeking, in the process of seeking, whatever you are seeking for, you will find. I think it's in the book of Matthew chapter 7, right? So I'm trying to read out these things for you. They don't teach you this in your church or in your mosque. 
So we're talking about the science of diabolism. Number four thing that those you call diabolical folks knows that you don't know is that they have no doubt whatsoever on if and how it will work. Now remember they are aware of this supernatural power, this spiritual power in the atmosphere. Number one, they have confidence in themselves that they can harness this spiritual power into their body. Now they also believe that they can transfer or soak in this power. They now have no doubt whatsoever. No doubt whatsoever. You see, when I tell you I'm going to give you money tomorrow and I could read your mind and in your mind you tell me that it's a lie I won't give me. I'm telling you when you come tomorrow, you will not get what I promised you. That is the same thing with the universe. Unfortunately for you, you cannot hide from the universe. You exist in the universe. You are a subset of the universe. So there is something in you or there is nothing in you rather that does not come from this universe. You were made from here. Your component is from here. Your spiritual awakening, your enlightenment, your spiritual awareness, your body, your mortal, everything. You got these things, components of the universe. So some people are saying, okay, where did my mind come from? Where is my body come from? I say your body and your mind are just physical phenomena. What do I mean by that? Whatever it is you eat or you have been eating resulted in this body you have. If you have not been eating well, you will not look good. If there are food you need to eat to enhance your height or your growth and you are not eating them, you will be stunted. You might be here, you know. So your body is as a result of the things you took in from outside. Your mind is also made up of the component of physical impression. Your mind is made up of physical impression. In your mind now, you believe there is God. How did you believe there is God? When you were born, do you know if there is God or not? You didn't know. What happened? They keep telling you, they keep putting it in your mind. They keep laying impression on you. So to, to, point, to the point whereby you have become so convinced that nobody else can convince you again that there is no God. So either there is God or devil, all of these things are product of your learning. You can also unlearn them. Either there is heaven or hell, they are product of your learning. No one came into this world with the knowledge of God or devil, hell or heaven. You, didn't come, you were not born with those knowledge. You learned them here. Goodness, evil, whatever it is, you learned everything. And if you learn them, you can unlearn them. All of these things are component or the composition of your mind. They are also things you took in from outside. And what is this outside? The universe. You exist here. Everything you take in, everything that you are thinking of, also are gotten from outside of you. So your mind is not you. Even though it can be useful, your body is not also you. Even though you need it to exist here. Now, what are the elements of diabolism? The elements of diabolism. Number one is your imagination. The very first element of diabolism is your imagination. You can check my YouTube channel. I did a teaching a few days ago talking to you about talking to you about um, if your imagination is captured then your whole life is in ruin. The once your imagination is captured, your whole life is in ruin. Because the imagination of a man determines the limitation of that man. So the very first element of your of diabolical power is your imagination. How imaginary are you? How imaginative are you as a person? Now to which extent can your imagination go? Now, when you, in your mind, keep imagining that you will die at so 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 age, you do not know, but you are being diabolical against yourself. Because your imagination is already planting and planning your death, your untimely death. But in your mind, you kept imagining that you will live long, you will be prosperous, you will do this and that. You are also being diabolical for yourself. Now you are using the power of your imagination positively right now. So diabolism necessarily do not mean somebody is doing something against you or for you. Sometimes you can be doing something against yourself and for yourself also. The moment you know how to make use of the power of imagination, every other thing falls in place or out of place for you. Because as a man thinks, so he is. Now your mind is the place where you imagine things. 
and you can only imagine things you have been you have you have had external or physical impression of there is someone you wish death for so in your mind first you kill them there so there is someone you want to have sex with in your mind you have naked them you have done it you have finished it in your mind before you now carry it out in your body why because your imagination give you the right impulse to bring to reality the images on your head so if you right now are not thinking of anybody else but yourself but what you are thinking about yourself is evil now you are being diabolical against yourself that's the power you have so that's why i said at the end of this particular teaching you will be able to decipher for yourself how diabolical you have been also now, the second element of diabolism is your emotion. This is the reason why I always tell people that you cannot approach a good thing with a negative emotion. You want your relationship to work out, but you are dealing with that relationship with a negative emotion. You started a business, you want it to work out, but everything in your body concerning your emotion is negative. You cannot achieve success with a failing emotion. When your emotion is beginning to now contradict your conviction everything you meet is failure the first element of diabolism is your imagination now you have imagined that you want to make life easy by building a multinational company for yourself first thing is that it is established in your imagination in your mind the second thing is your emotion are you feeling cool and feeling good about it then everything will now begin to now give you the right nudge and the right motivation to go ahead with what you have imagined. But the moment you begin to feel negatively towards your good dream, what you have is a conflict of yourself. Within yourself, you started a war, and that's what they call doubting. The third element of diabolism is your confession, your confession, your confession, which is your mouth. Now, these are the three elements, your mind, number one, your energy number two which is emotion and your mouth which is your confession now the moment your mind aligns with your emotion and what you are feeling aligns with what you're saying nothing can stop you but it should happen in our days that we have been so corroded and be so fed with so many pessimistic images in life that at the end of the day even if you try to be optimistic there are too much or way more data that negate your dream, your purpose, your life, your vision, your achievement than the ones that will approve them. Tune into TV, you will see several reasons why you should not start that business. You will see many reasons why you should not get married. You will see many reasons why you cannot give birth to your own child. You will see many reasons why you cannot be successful in life. Now, in the universe, mankind keep producing more data that will negate them, defeat them, more than the ones that would help them achieve success. Now, the universe never creates negativity. It is mankind who have the power to create both negativity and positivity. What the universe gives to you is neutral energy. What you do with that neutral energy is now what we call either negative or positive but it is so much easier for mankind to create more negative energies more negative data than they would create positive data and positive energy our pessimistic mortal nature really is actually impeding or limited or limiting against our own desire in life so all of a sudden you feel that you should ask a lady out because you are in love with her and in a nanoseconds, your mind is filled up with several possibilities of us saying no, disgracing you and all that. And the moment you begin to dwell on if it will work or not work, what your brain does is to trigger the alarm of defeat. Defeat, 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 defeat. Sometimes you don't take it through. Sometimes you get there and you begin to stutter. Sometimes you just swallow it up. That wasn't the way you were programmed to be. As if whoever gives you the desire to be successful has given you what it takes to also be successful. That is the same method of diabolism. 
once your mind aligns with your emotion and your emotion aligns with your with your confession you will see that it is not one divine power bringing your answers to your table it is you working it out for yourself an elderly man posted something that was really a slot that of a particular religious sect they said that faith is taking responsibility in the light of the scripture and committing God to integrity or to perform with his integrity. I said, why are you confusing yourself, sir? Way elderly man. I said, you could have finished the old statement by saying faith is taking responsibility. Because if you say faith is taking responsibility in the light of the scripture, there are so many situations that you find yourself that is not documented in any scripture. Because the scripture you see were only validated for the dispensation it was written to. Only you are claiming and clinging onto it to make it work for you too. That's why your life is where it is. You are neither forward nor backward. Those who give you these scriptures are better than you in life. I said, now committing God's integrity to perform is almost like negating you saying that faith is taking responsibility. If it is God's integrity to perform, why are you taking responsibility at all? So we should be mindful of most of these slogans that want to actually limit us and suppress our possibility in life. See, there is nothing that can happen in your life without your approval. As a matter of fact, you are the creator of the kind of life you are living right now. And I do hope you are getting my explanation. I purposely taking it easy for you today so that you can get it in. Now, the moment you are able to get to that realization in life that you are your God and you are your own devil, You'll be mindful of what you do to yourself with your mind, with your emotion, and with your confession. Now, with confession, people go and say, I belong to this. If I do this against this, let this happen to me. At the time they were given that confession, what they are doing is that they are applying faith to the words that they are saying. Now, faith is now taking responsibility. Now, whatever repercussion you have stated into the atmosphere, that will happen to you when you do negatively or negating what you have confessed happen to you. Now, what they call covenant in life is not something that devil is waiting for you to come and make before him. It's not something that God is waiting for you to come and make before him. It is something you make within yourself. And if I am the one barricading you from freedom, if I am the one putting you on that chain, you have a case. But if you are the one putting yourself on that chain, you will never be free. What am I trying to say? There is something about you. Now, look at yourself right now. Take a picture of yourself. Watch yourself right now. Now, forget about the contours, the breast, the buttocks, the chest, the masculine nature, how fair you are, how dark you are, short you are, and all that. Now, remove your head from that. Now, look at yourself like a, a, go, a globe, a globe, you know, the globe that these people that watch is, uh, people star and horoscope use. Look at yourself like that. You don't have a mouth, you don't have a, you don't have a nose, you don't have a eyes, you don't have anything, no hair. You are just a globe. And this globe is like a spell of yes and amen. You see, this globe, whatever you say to it, becomes finer. Look at yourself like that. Now, because this globe actually have the power to give final verdict to everything you say to it this globe becomes a kind of god and a kind of devil now whatever you say to this globe in terms of positivity positivity it becomes your lord so you now begin to say god has done good to me no you did it yourself whatever you say to this globe in terms of negativity it becomes your lord you know why it becomes your lord because inside this globe there is water remember that your body is made of 71 percent of water and water have the ability to store memories, uh, have the memory to store information. So whatever you say to water, either from here till there or whatever it is, it carries it. So you can pray to water and drink it and whatever you say it should do it will be done in your heart. Now this is not praying to water. This is now talking to the water that is already inside of you. Either to work against you when you do this or to work for you when you do this. So you are making a covenant not before any shrine. You might be seeing shrine. You know, I told you about all those things that are paraphernalia or regalias. They don't really mean anything. 
but because diabolical people know that they can transfer power into those objects, they also use it as a substance of faith and evidence of the things that you are hoping for. Now, in that regard, now look at yourself as that globe, not a girl, not a boy, not a man, not a woman, but a globe that is containing water, 71% of water, knowing that water have molecular structures that is able to store information and is able to communicate that information back to you. So when you tell yourself, when you make a covenant or you confess with your mouth and say, if I marry a black woman, let me die untimely. What you have done is you have committed all the 71% water in your body to work against you the day you do what you have said you want to do. And do you know the beautiful thing about knowing this thing as a seeker? It is understanding that if you create it, you can also uncreate it before it happens. If you, create it, if you create that reality, you can also uncreate it before it happens. Now, I'm going to be answering question uh, very soon. Remember what I was teaching before? Now, I've taught you what the people who are diabolical believe that you don't believe. And I've also mentioned the element of diabolism. When you have all of these things in place, you can also be diabolical. Remember I told you the reason why you think diabolism is negative is because you don't have the technical know-how or you don't understand the science of diabolism. If all of us in this place have power, the same kind of power, we will say that power is good. But when one of us have power than the other, we will say uh, God is uh, unjust or the spirit of life is very unjust. So the reason why you will bow down and say Jesus is God is because you don't know what he knows. That's the same way it plays out with those who have money than you. They don't tell you the secret. They keep the secret of riches and wealth from you so that you can keep worshipping them. So what do they know that you don't know? What does your pastor know that you don't know? These are the things that I'm telling you. And I'm telling you they will not be happy with this. Because the moment you can practice this by yourself, what happens is that you will not need anybody to actually become your divine reality. Now, what are the things that should be involved or that will be involved to make diabolism very, 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 very effective? These things can be involved, but the greatest things that could be involved is your mind. But let's just state a few things that can be involved. How can people connect with you? How can they connect with you and be diabolical against you now? Uh, blood, body fluids. Remember what I just told you about water? Body fluids. If someone can get your body fluids, they can actually use that body fluid as a point of contact either for you or against you so as a seeker you want to be careful who you have sex with who you have sex with not because sex is going to get you entangled with them spiritually or all those things that your church people told you but because having sex with someone and exchanging body fluid with them as little as kissing exchanging body fluid uh, you have actually made yourself a little bit susceptible for whatever it is that that person is actually having towards you. So you, you might not say a word to anybody. You might not say a word to them. How is it that when you are married as a, as a person, as a man, when you begin to maltreat your wife, things begin to go haywire for you? How, what do you think is the science behind that? So the book of First Peter chapter 5 verse 7 told you that do not maltreat your wife, God will not be pleased with you. They do not explain to you. Now the reason why there is so much people in religion going to church is because nobody is telling you, these people are not preaching to you, they are not teaching you, they are just preaching. When they tell you the rudiment of everything, not to scare you but to make you be aware so that you can take more responsibility, you realize that you might not need them to go there anymore. And you can teach your generations and children these things. So when you kiss a person, you exchange body fluid with them, they have actually seen, they have a hold of the things that can carry memory inside of you. Remember what I told you about water. So at that moment in time that they are kissing you, you are making love to them and all that. And the state of their art to you is not pure or is negative. What you're doing is like you are putting a USB, a USB flash drive into a computer system to download the content of the other person. To download the content of the other person. So your body fluid, your blood also. You know, your blood contains so many information about you, what you're going to be, how you're going to live, if you are going to be having terminal disease, how long your nails will be, the extent to which you will go. Your blood carries it. When someone can lay hold on your blood, 
Or maybe you use your own blood too. And uh, any form of growth in your body, anything that carries your DNA, even your air, your air, your sweat, whatever it is that can carry your DNA can be spoken to and that thing will work against you or for you. Now those things are serving as a link to you because they came out of your body. Now this is not, I'm getting deeper now, I'm not now telling you to be living mindfully, I'm just saying be careful, be cautious. I'm not saying be suspicious of people. I'm not saying start suspecting people. But I'm saying that these are the things that you don't know, that they know. So someone have the power over you when you are ignorant of what they know. So any growth from your body, fluid, uh, hair from your body and all that can actually be used. When they have it, they can speak to it. Remember the elements of diabolism? Your mind, your emotion, your mouth, your confession. So when they decided to now imagine evil towards you or good towards you and they choose to now use the mouth on the things that came out of your body. So you hear people say, okay, they say I should go and bring the pant of the person that hurt me or the bra of the person that hurt me and all of those things. Now it's not like a bra is what they need. They know that you have exchanged DNA. If forensic science, you know, when you rape someone or you do something, they can get into your uh, bathroom and take, you know, that is... You know how it goes. So they can actually use those things to actually speak also against you. Something like a response link also is also very, very, very important. When you were born, you were given a tag. Your tag is your name. When you were born, you have a lot of possibilities, you have a lot of curiosity, you have a lot of inquisitiveness, you have a lot of things around you, but you don't have a tag. So the day you were named, Ida Chinyere, Ida Nkechi, Ida Bayo, or whatever they call you, the day you were named, everything about you is being categorized under that name given to you. Your possibility, your success, your failure, your limitation, your searching, your seeking, what you're going to be, everything is now being combined together, encapsulated under that, that name. So... This diabolical force can actually make use of your name against you. So when they call your name, that's what I call a response link. When they call your name, everything about you answers to whatever it is there. So what should you do when you know that someone can call your name for evil? What you would do is to approach life with the antidote. So what you do is what I call negation of your name towards such a thing. How do you negate? You don't call your name every morning and say, I change the word. So ever weapon fashion against me shall not No, no, that's not what you you maintain a good mental state regarding yourself. We will get to that. Also, your efforts, your efforts like your money, you know, when you money is what you are giving in exchange for your sweat, right? So it is easy for you to keep giving your money to your pastor or your sheikh because one way or the other they make use of the money you give to them to help you make covenant wherever they are making the covenant. So when they say you're looking for your flu, then they cannot get your sweat directly. They can make use of the money you have earned because money is an exchange you get for your flu. Something like landed property also can also be used. It is bought in your name, right? It belongs to you. One or two people knows this is yours, so they can make use of it. So let's go quickly to medium as I begin to round up. Medium. If you have questions, you can actually put it on online for me. Let's go to medium. Medium. You remember I told you when I started about existing as a subset of the universe. That there is nothing you call yourself right now that you did not get in from the universe. What you call your body is a product of the universe. What you call your mind, a product of the universe. So the universe also is not limited to the planet Earth. You think planet Earth is the only universe? No, 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 no. We have the galaxy, we have the Milky Way galaxy, we have the black holes, we have the meteorite, we have everything sprung together. We have Jupiter, we have Venus, we have several undiscovered planets also. The, those are components of the universe. And you are just a, light, a little tiny speck of the universe. Of the universe. So, because you are a subset of the universe, 
You share everything in common with either the sun, the moon, the star, the whatever it is, because you are product of the same set. So all other cosmic forces of nature, like the moon, the sun, whatever it is, can also be used. They can be invoked by the people who, are, who want to be diabolically, who want to be negatively diabolical, who are against whoever they want. So whatever they, they can use the wind, they can use the breeze also. They just tell the wind that whatever the wind is blowing to, as long as you take the wind, they put information in the wind. I forgot to mention to you that not only water can store memory, even breeze, the wind can also store memory. And you know, until water touches you, it can't work. But the breeze, you can't do without it. So when somebody keep a message for you in the wind, somehow you get it. That's why we say meditation is the most important part of a seeker. Because in your meditation time, you are connected to the wind that blows around the whole universe. So all of these people, they can instigate the moon, the star, and all of those things against the other person. Is it the way they use it against them? They can also use it for them. How is it that when somebody is praying for you from Nigeria, you get miracles or you get answers in abroad? Are they posting it through DHL? No, just the wind. The second one is representation. You can also be fully represented using the figurines, using the figurines. You know, the figurines, they carve it and all of those things. In the early 70s, in the continent of Australia, you can search it up. People were practicing what they call voodoo. It was what I'm teaching you right now, the science of diabolism. Now, it has become an institution on its own. But they were now making use of it negatively. So a person who does not like his boss or wife or whatever can take it to one person and they will give you a doll, you know, a dolly in all those baby kings' way. <laughs> All they tell you is just to keep calling the name of the person you don't like and use pain to be pinching it, to be pinching it every day for seven days. And while you do that, the person will be living in so much pain and turmoil. And at the end of seven days, the person dies. These people are white folks, not Africans. So this diabolical stuff is a science that can be replicated, can be done everywhere. In the world it will give you the same result so people were dying through mysterious means and sorcery so much the government had to ban it they outlawed that practice you either kill you are either being killed by death sentence or you are being jailed for life if you are caught doing that practice until they finally outlaw it but it was working it was working so when you think about diabolism, most people think it's only Africans that can be diabolical. The only reason why it seems like Africans can be diabolical is because we use the, the science of diabolism for negative things most than every other person in the continent. Than any other person in the continent. So the cosmic forces of nature, those who know the secret of this cosmic of nature, they know that you are a product of it. They can also use it against you. They can also represent you somehow. I told you about one time, I shared one thing with you about one time that I was fasting. Those times that I still used to go to mountains. And I went to this mountain uh, along Ekwe, Ekwe, Jebode, and uh, whenever we finish praying and everybody is prophesying and all that to their life. This man will stay so far away from us. So one day I went to him, I was like, don't you have what to eat and all that? I can share some food with you. And I saw him eating bitter cola, eating bitter leaf and all of those things. But he was cursing someone on the mountain. And he said, my son, sit down. Very old prophet. And he said, I was given this contract to kill this man within the next seven days. So what I do is that I starve myself. When I starve myself and I'm about to eat, he said, I starve myself and I fill my mind with so much hatred and negativity towards this person. I've not met him before. He didn't offend me. I was contracted, but I have his picture. I fill my mind with hatred towards this person. I starve myself. He said, when I want to break in the evening, I just eat what will make me more bitter, like bitter leaf and all those things that does not make well. Uh, so he said, in that rage and that emotion, 
I now use my mind, my mouth, to confess into the air, into the atmosphere, that whenever he is, wherever he is, if hair is touching him, if he's breathing in oxygen, the hair should be working against him, the water should be working against him. I was already melting. And he told me this thing works everywhere. So you can use this thing for positive stuff, and you can also use it for negative stuff. So no wonder when you do meditation, maybe you lock yourself up for three days or maybe seven days and you are doing meditation, focusing on a certain thing, focusing on that certain thing. Miracles happen. Miracles happen. You can heal your children by yourself. You can heal your body by yourself. You can have an inch of what is going to happen in the future by yourself. This has nothing to do with calling, say, God, open, open, she, she, ki on, ki on, she, let the heaven open and all that. It has nothing to do with calling Jesus, open, reveal to me, Holy Spirit. No, no, no. So the moment you subject yourself to the, to the magnanimous database called the universe, and you focus on the things you are looking for, without uttering a word, in that moment, which you call meditation as a seeker, you are absorbing things. And from that place, you can see beyond where you are right now. You can see way beyond where you are right now. And you can get to a level in life whereby you begin to see things clearly. Clearly. But this is what I advise seekers who are in the Telegram group with us. I told them, so whatever you see in the moment of meditation, do not use it to threaten others or use it to make their life miserable. Don't even bother telling them. Because the moment you begin to tell them, they begin to see you as God. Nobody should be your God except yourself. Assuming you have the power to see tomorrow and you have the power to say it and it will come to pass, only use it for positivity. Now, if other people have this knowledge and this science of diabolism and they can use it against you, what also can you use to actually negate it? So some people wonder why is it that when they call our name for evil, you know, I wake up to cursing almost every day. People curse me as if I offend them because of this truth I realize. It is normal. If I wake up in the day and nobody is cursing me, I begin to wonder if I've done something wrong. Am I not, am I not my real self again? People curse people, go to any length and all of those things, appear in the dream and all those things. I just be like, don't kill yourself. Why are you wasting your time on me? Why are you wasting your time on me? Why? Why are you expending such energy on me? Why don't you face your life? So what are the antidotes to this diabolism? So that you can also, the first thing is the right mindset. The right mindset. There's something I always say, I say, may the best force win. May the best force win. Now they have this force that you also have. They are using it negatively, but you are using yours positively. Force to secure yourself. How do you have the right mindset? By going to the top. If you are joining late, go back to the top. I told you that you must be aware of the presence of spiritual power. Supernatural power, so to say. You must be confident in yourself that only you yourself can harness this power to the best of your own imagination. And don't put a limit on yourself by doing that. Also know that this power and this energy is transferable. You can soak it in, you can give it out then you must have no doubt that this thing can work. Then you begin to have the right mindset. Your mindset should be the mindset of no negativity that is being hooked or conjured against me will work. The moment your mind is fixed or, or your gaze is fixed on the fact that you are indestructible, nothing can penetrate inside of you except it is coming within you. See, what they call defeat happens from within you. What they call success happens from within you. Nobody can fail you if you have not failed yourself. So also in terms of the power over your head. Unfortunately, most people live like an animal in the jungle or in the poultry. They live their own destiny and their own future at the mercy of other people. As a matter of fact, most people even live like in fear. The moment fear is found in you, defeat is so close. And where do you produce the fear from? From within you. Where do you produce confidence from? From within you. Where do you produce the faith from? From within you. Where is your right mindset? From within you. So one scripture was saying, even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, 
it takes a person with the right mindset who knows that death is not my limit and I'm not ready to embrace it to be able to walk in the valley of the shadow of death and not die. So either you are going to die tomorrow or you are going to live longer. The defeat and the failure is from within you. Nobody can form a weapon against you if you have not given it a place to stay within you. So those people that do bad diabolical things and all of those things and it's not working against you is because you, you don't give them you don't give them a chance over your head. And uh, more often than not, most of you go for refuge in a place where there is no power. So that's the reason why even as a Christian, somebody will be threatening you with cockroach. Somebody will be threatening you with this and that. Because you, you call the name of Jesus and you are still dying like fowl every day. You do not ask if this name is actually working or I'm the one not working. Because those who call the name of Shongo, they also get miracle. Those who call Igbe or Ofe, those who call Oya or Oshun, those who call several things, they also get miracles. Now, if all power is only belonging to this Jesus, why are they also getting power? So I put it to you right now that neither Jesus have the power, neither Shongo have the power, neither Horus have the power, neither Water have the power. Every power that you have exerted in life is you giving or activating your ideal spiritual ability from within you. Every single divine intervention you think you have gotten or experienced in life is just you calling into the deep. They say, deep call it unto the deep. The ancient Kemetic scripture or scroll told you how you can be empowered from within you. You can call that name or do this talisman from now to tomorrow if your faith and your mindset is not aligning with it, it's not working for you. Not because of that thing, but because of you. So either you are a Christian, Muslim, a traditionalist or whatever, if you are experiencing supernatural power, it is still dependent on you, not those things that you are following. So the name of Jesus is not what is saving you. It is you activating your idol spiritual ability. Shongo is not the one saving you. It is you in acting, activating your spiritual ability within. Oya is not the one saving you. Osho is not saving you. All those things you put as a substance and object, they are just a physical representation, ordinary costume. They call them persona. Because they were given to you just to be able to now spoil yourself into becoming. Without your faith or your own intention to make it work, nothing works for you. So what makes it work? It is you. That's why I said you are the God. And you are the devil. You are the heaven and you are the hell. Whatever you say to happen on this place will happen. Anything you decree happens. Not necessarily reaching out to someone. So having the right mindset that except I kill myself, you can't kill me. You won't get killed. And I'm not lying. Having the right mindset that if I go to bed this night, I'm waking up tomorrow morning. No, 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 nobody can kill me in my dream. I will not answer to any form of calling that is not positive. You will wake up tomorrow morning. But look at it this way. You are going to bed this night. And you are thinking, what if they call me in the dream and I answer? What if they do this and answer? Please go, come and save me. You are still relinquishing your responsibility to something that is not you. First, you have planted the, def the, the defeat by imagining that they might call you. Secondly, instead of you to now say, I will not answer, you now say, God, come and save me. You are still missing in the picture. So what if it is the will of God for them to get you that day? You are dead. So a long time ago, I stopped saying, God forbid. I begin to say, I forbid. It is what I forbid that is forbidden. I don't know what God is forbidding anywhere is. Are you catching the teaching now? Some will call it heretic. But heresy is your ability to be able to think outside the box and discover these things. You can't get this information and knowledge by being a Christian or a Muslim. You have to be the one who seek for these things. So they say Jesus turned water into bell wine and a lot of those things and then for once let's say, let's assume that jesus existed the same jesus now told you that the things i did you can do he said even more than this you can also do but you are still talking and calling him to come and do for you so i keep wondering what is your problem 
irresponsibility. Is he your birthright in life as an African person? The person you are calling and following said that, come, free me now, me, I'm going to die. Free me, you can do these things. You can do more than that. But because you have not sat down to think about it and make researches regarding it, you keep giving your destiny to chances. So those who are not conscious of their life or making decisions that will affect them positively, they believe in destiny and they believe that someone else is responsible for their own destiny. I write my destiny and I dictate my own karma. So the first antidote is your right mindset. What is your mindset right now? Do you believe somebody can get you? Do you believe you can be killed? Do you believe you are dying? Do you believe you are not going to be successful? Do you believe you are not going to make it in life? Whatever it is you think, so be it for you. But if you believe nobody, nobody can, nobody will. The second thing is purity within. Purity within. Does he element of fear is found mostly in people that are very that are not straightforward element of fear is found within these people who are not straightforward within you can you vouch for purity your thought towards the other person is he pure if your thought towards the other person is pure, what, you, what happened to you is that you live in absolute state of positivity. But when you also have the ability or the tendency of thinking negatively against someone, you are always suspicious of everybody. And while you are being suspicious, what happens is that your energy level is draining. Instead of you focusing on how powerful you are, you begin to focus on how someone might be more powerful than you and fear setting and they got you. Purity within. How are you treating the person right next to you? What is the content of your inner man? How is your life? How is it? This has something to do with you. I have no access for a long time. This has something to do with what is your disposition towards the people around you, the nature you live with, and all the things that is under your care. Are you pure within you? Only those who are pure can make use of this power that the universe is giving. Only those who are pure. And then the good deeds, the good deeds, the things you do for others, humanitarianism. It's something they call supplication and intercession. This has nothing to do with being, being religious. Every single person you reach out to in life, either they open their mouth or not, they are praying for you. Good deeds spur people to stand in gap for you. So how do you take it? Do you take it as a responsibility in life to always do what is good to people? Or you think you are less concerned? Because the truth is you can't do it alone. Your energy may not be enough sometimes. You don't necessarily need to hire people to come and be supple, supple, doing supplication for you or praying for you, but when you do good to people, naturally, you just so goodness here, good energy 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 here. Everywhere you go to, your good energy is just pouring out into the universe. No one can get you. No one can get you. So that is the science of diabolism. Now, all the secrets I've shared with you right now, you can either go back to learn again, jot it down, and begin to practice it for good or for evil. It is not left to you. Remember, the universe does not do what is good or do what is bad. The universe only gives you the ability to do. It is you that do what is good or what is bad. The energy in the universe is pure and neutral. It is mankind that directs it towards positivity or negativity. Mr. Tunde is asking that, good afternoon, great man, please, I just want to know your source of income. I have a reason for my question. Okay, Mr. Tunde is asking for my source of income. I wonder why you are asking for my source of income. Are you, do you have a job for me or you are feeding me? That's way too personal question and it is actually none of your business. My source of income is totally none of your business and I believe also if you really meant well, you won't be asking me about my source of income on a live video. I don't beg for bread. 
and have not begged from you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alright, so if you enjoyed the video, please just press the share button, send with your friend, empower them also. Snatch them from the jaw of these people, making them try, making them serve other people instead of looking inward themselves. And if you're also on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Man Ali Lara. Press your subscribe button and also your notification button also. And if you also are wondering what is seeking or what a seeker is, seeking is not religion. Seeking is believing that you are the light of the world. So everywhere you get to, you bring illumination to your darkness. Seeking is believing that you are the salt of the world. So everywhere you get to, every form of decaying situation, you bring preservation and add flavor to it. Seeking is believing that you are the word of life. And if it's not going to bind them up, give them hope, help them move from one level of success to the other, you just keep that mouth shut. Seeking is bringing into physical realm your divine reality. And you can go to your telegram, just search for 1 million seekers, 1 million seekers on telegram. And join that group, post your questions, any kind of question at all. Except for this kind of uh, question that Mr. Tunde Fenwa is asking, this is a very silly question, so to say, to me. I don't mean to disrespect you, but this is very, very uncalled for and very silly. Uh, you can do well to mind your business and also try not to poke your nose in other people's business. And if you have a very good question to ask people when it comes to personal stuff, you know what to do. Go to their inbox, get their phone number and call them up. Thank you very much and thank you for watching. Namaste.